Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the October 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're made and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. So yesterday, I stopped by with the brand new sheet load of cards, which is October 2021. I showed you a look at the first set I made, and told you how you could download that printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Now, if you haven't yet seen that video and you want to download the file and get a close-up look at that first set, when you're done here, I do have a link in the description box below to the October 2021 debut. I also told you yesterday how this month is a little extra special. The layout for this month's sheet load of cards was inspired by one of my collaboration team members. Chelsea from the Creative Chelsea channel here on YouTube shared the card that is up on screen now a couple months ago and I just fell in love and I was thrilled when she agreed to let me use it as inspiration for this month's layout. Up here at the top of the printable you will notice her logo and her website. I hope that you will stop by there and leave her some love. She does make truly inspiring creations. I have her YouTube channel her website and her Instagram account linked in that description box below for you to go check her out. Also today, my team of collaborators will be sharing their first set of cards using this month's sketch. You can find them here on YouTube, over on Instagram, and we do have a couple blog team members as well. Everybody is linked in that description box below. I know that they would love you to stop by, see what they made, and leave them some love. There are a couple special things to note for this month's printable. One of them is that this circle here, I do call for a piece of vellum. But like I mentioned yesterday, if you don't have vellum, just use a piece of cardstock from your stash. Another thing is this little zigzag piece here behind the vellum circle is actually a piece of cardstock ribbon. And later I'll show you how you can create that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies that I'll be using today. Over here on the right are the dies that I'll be using. I got out a nested circle set and some leaf dies from Spellbinders. For my sentiment and focal point, I'm using this stamp and cut set from Hero Arts. It says hello and then has different little phrases to go with it. I chose some cardstock that coordinated with my pattern paper. And then of course, my two pieces of pattern paper. These I thought had kind of a fall feel, which I thought was good for October. Now, as I add any other products or tools later on in the video, I will be sure to let you know about those. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Please excuse the blurriness. It will go away in just a little bit. But the first thing I'm gonna do today is cut my pattern paper per the cutting guides. Now you will want to make sure that if your paper has a direction, you keep that in mind before you make that first cut. I rotated mine so I cut two five inch sections from the top of the paper and then those pieces got rotated back to the way that they'll sit on the card and I used the mark to the left of my cut line to cut these into 10 pieces that were two and a quarter inches wide. Once the wood grain pattern paper was cut, I brought in the floral paper and made the same cuts until I had 10 pieces from each of those. The next cutting will be for CS1 and I have three sheets of cardstock to cut down to the given sizes. Now you will end up with more than you need so you can just stop cutting when you get to 10. Once again, I'm going to be cutting my cardstock into the height needed, which for these is five and a quarter inches, and then I will rotate that and cut it to the correct width of four inches. 
each cardstock piece will yield me four. And then I just keep doing this until I get to the very last cardstock, which after I cut that five and a quarter inch height, I do have a piece left over and I will be using this later to do some die cutting from. After those are all cut, I just have the cardstock for CS2, and this will be cut down to 10 pieces that are 11 inches wide by a half inch tall. Now for this, I just put it in my trimmer, and I will once again be using the half inch mark to the left of the cut line, and I just make a cut, move the cardstock to the left, make another cut, and keep doing that until I have those 10 strips. Now it probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and cut an extra, but again, I will be using that leftover later for some die cutting. Off camera, I cut, scored, and folded my card bases, and I realized after I had them all done that I made it a side fold instead of a top fold, but you know what? That's okay, that will work as well. For my vellum circles, I did just use some 28 pound scraps I had on hand and I will be using a spellbinder circle that is approximately the same size as the circle on the sketch. The cutting guides and some of the special notes on page one of the printable do share this, but you will want to separate your pattern papers so you have five of each pattern in kind of piles together. This way you are tearing the correct edges off as many pieces as you need. You'll need five of each pattern with the right edge torn off and five of each pattern with the left edge torn off. Now I would say you'll want to tear about a half an inch. Some areas can be more than that, but I'm not sure that you'll want to go any less. You will notice later on when I'm putting the cards together that I did have to tear extra off some pieces. So if you go ahead and tear maybe a little bit more than you think right now, it just may save you a step in the end. I just continued to tear until all pieces had that edge. I also decided to hang on the torn scraps and while you won't see it in the video, later I did actually use these on the inside of the cards. Here comes probably one of the hardest things about this sketch, and it is something that you could totally skip if it's too much. You can also use real ribbon and it might be easier. Now Chelsea, when she does this, she kind of folds her ribbon in half, finds the center part, puts it on the back of her circle, and then she just folds it where it needs to be folded by hand. Now I will have her video linked in the description box below so you can check it out, and she makes it look easy, so I hope you will. For myself, I wanted to make sure that they were all uniform and easy to do. So I got out a scrap of craft cardstock, and I cut it into two pieces that were three inches tall by three and five eighths inches wide. Now the three and five eighths inch mark is the one that is halfway between the half mark and the three quarters inches mark. Once those were both cut down, I then adhered them together and this was just to make it more durable or sturdy. If you already have a nice heavy cardstock, you might not need to do this. But I did go ahead and write save on there so that I will have it. Now to get started, I do basically the same thing as Chelsea. I find the center, making sure not to do a harsh fold with that piece of cardstock. Then I do my best to keep the center of the ribbon in the center of my piece of cardstock, and I just tilt it, and you'll want to practice with the angles until I like the angle in the middle, and then I wrap the edges back around that piece of cardstock, making sure that the edges are parallel with my folding template. Now you'll notice on this first one, it's pretty skinny there behind that vellum circle. And on the next one, I am going to try a different angle so you can see the difference. This one has a slightly larger slant, so the right side is higher this time, but the rest of this is all the same. And now you'll notice when I take it off my cardstock template that the space between the top and the bottom piece is greater and it fills more of the back of the vellum circle. How you do this is totally up to you. 
If you do end up finding an angle that you really like and want to replicate for the rest of the pieces, you can always use a pencil and trace lightly along the edges. That way when you do your next piece, you'll just make sure it lines up with those pencil lines. I continued this same process until I had all 10 paper ribbons folded. I will be hanging on to my little cardstock template and I just paper clipped it to my prints for this month. To hold my vellum circle in place on my cardstock ribbon, I will be using some glue dots. Before I place them, I did use a bone folder to just crispen up that fold so it would lay more flat. And then I placed three glue dots onto that paper ribbon, just keeping it kind of in the center. Now later I know that this will be covered up by my decoration. Now you do not have to use glue dots. You could use liquid glue or a glue sponge, whatever you prefer. When adhering my vellum circle, I only remove the release paper from the center glue dot and then I line up my vellum circle so it's centered left to right on that diagonal piece. I'm just trying to eyeball it just to make it as even as possible. Once it is in place, I press down that center glue dot and then I remove the release paper from the remaining two strips and adhere that down. Now you can see the glue dot a little bit through the vellum, but like I mentioned before, later that will be covered up. I kept adding glue dots and the vellum circles to my strips of cardstock until I had all 10 of those completed. Once all of the cardstock ribbons were adhered, I brought in some scissors and trimmed off the ends of those. Now you could do slants like I did on the first one, use decorative scissors like I did on the second, or like I did for the remainder and just cut them so those pieces hanging at the edge were the same width. That once again is totally up to you. While I keep working on that, I just wanted to let you know that if you think this is too much for you, you can make the cards however easy or difficult that you wish. I thought it would be fun. I usually do super clean and simple, but this month I decided to go full out. But you are always welcome to just put an image on there, a piece of ephemera, only stamp a sentiment, do whatever is most comfortable for you and the time that you have. The next step for me was to add my torn pieces to the orange cardstock mats. Now I did pair up a wood grain with a floral to see if I needed to tear any extra off. And on this first one, there was some of the orange peeking out from the center. So I just adhered both of the pattern papers, trying to get the borders all the way around the outside the same 1 8 of an inch. You'll notice here on the second card when I match up my pattern papers that there is a little bit of overhang. Now you could definitely leave it like that, but I decided to tear just a little bit more off before adhering down my pattern papers. Once again then, I just continued the same process with the pattern papers until I had all 10 pieces adhered together. While I glue those to the front of the card base, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little queries I like to put out there for my viewers so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today's question is absolutely for fun and has nothing to do with crafting. Tomorrow, October 3rd, I will be going back for my very first live theater performance since everything shut down. And let me tell you, I love musicals. So I would like to know, are you a musical fan? And if so, what's your favorite musical? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. If you've been around my channel very long, or seen any pictures of my current craft room, you probably already know that my favorite musical is Hamilton. But I want to tell you about another one that if you ever get the chance to see it, I hope that you will. And that is Come From Away. When we went to see this, we had no expectations at all, did not know anything about it, and we ended up being blown away. It is just a heartwarming story 
that is centered around September 11th. I cannot wait to find out your answers in that comment section below. And now back to the process. Off camera, I die cut the leaves and the hello, and I made the first sample of what I wanted my focal point to look like. Now, I won't bore you with a whole lot of it, but I did want to show you how I'm going to put together one using that first one as kind of a template. I stamped just a note to say in a charcoal brown ink onto the smallest leaf, which was cut from craft cardstock. I just wanted to keep with the fall color palette, so that's why I chose the brown. Now once that was all done, I am going to use that first one as a template to know where I want all of my leaves to go, and I will do the layering in the process. Now once I have all the leaves in place with the stems and parts tucked in where they should be, I'm going to bring in a piece of scotch removable tape and for this strip I do pull off a couple inch wide strip and I place that carefully down onto my leaves. Now I know that these are exactly the way I want them to be for the final piece so I flip them over and I add some liquid glue to the back. Then this gets placed onto the vellum circle, just kind of about in the same place as on the first one, and I let that dry for about five minutes before moving on. Since the leaves were solidly adhered to the vellum circle, I could pull up my piece of scotch tape, and I actually kept using that same strip for all 10 of the focal points. Now the next thing I'm going to add is the Hello die cut and once again I use the liquid glue and I just put some little dots behind the more solid parts of the letters and that got placed onto the vellum circle as well and set aside to dry. Here's a look at all 10 of those focal points. To add a little dimension to the card, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width and I added strips behind my cardstock ribbon so the foam tape would be hidden from the front. Once I had pieces of tape on all the focal points, I then just started to pull that release paper and place these onto the card fronts. I do find that burnishing the foam tape helps the release paper come off more easily. You can adjust your focal point and place it where you think is best. I have mine just about maybe a half inch up from the bottom of the orange cardstock and I tried to center it as best as I could from left to right. I continued to add the focal points until they all had one and then it was time to add a little bling. For my sparkle today, I will be using my transparent gold glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs. You know I love the flatness of these and I love the price. If you ever want to check these out, I do have them linked in the description box below. And now here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the October 2021 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators. Their links are in that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.